content. We consume it every single day. Everywhere we look, we are faced with a decision on what we're going to fill ourselves up with. The question is, what are you filling yourself up on? Is it acceptable for a Christian to watch mature content? What if your pastor was watching mature content? How would you feel about that? What is right? Where do we draw the line? Let's talk about it. Should Christians watch mature themed content? I don't really think so, but there's more to it than just saying no. Let me explain. Before we begin any discussion, we need to define what I mean by mature. Because let's be honest, life is mature. But when we're talking about shows and content, I believe there's two types of mature perspectives. In my opinion, well, there's stories that feature mature scenes, all which are compiled into the telling of a story, no different than reading a book or perhaps even reading the Bible that shows depictions of stuff that happened back in the day. You know, it's just life. Rated R doesn't necessarily mean don't watch. It just means mature topics and dialogue, you know, passion of the Christ was rated R. We got to be mature Christians. We got to use discernment where it applies. It's just content that is mature in nature. And then on the flip side, there's mature content that is overly saturated and purely based around the glorification of sinful acts. You know, murder, aggressive nudity, adultery, vulgar themes. It's just over the top depictions that are just plainly rooted and sin and i'm trying to be very charitable here with my labeling because my opinion isn't an authority but if it were up to my own personal opinion too much cussing throw it out nudity on display not for me dark or sinful themes no time for that but regardless of what category our chosen content falls in i think the sermon is needed for most shows and then there's also plenty of shows that i think we should just blatantly push aside as believers and not watch at all let's take squid game for an example. And full disclosure, I did watch parts of Squid Game when it came out. And this was actually when I started to ask myself, should I even be watching? And the reason I bring up Squid Game is because it's one of those recent series that came out that got me thinking about this topic, mainly due to its strong profanity and murderous theme and overall dark storyline. Yeah, it was very well put together, but that's not what I'm questioning here. As a Christian, I started to have some conviction as to why am I watching this show? Why am I finding this entertaining? All it is are scenes of gruesome murder, suggestive themes, and strong language. And these are all real sins that Christ died for. And then here I am watching this, enjoying this, taking pleasure in seeing it all go down. And I don't think that Christians should have their interests lying in stuff like this. When we look at the cross, when we look at the price paid for our sins, how can we in good conscience divulge into content that belittles the sin that put our savior on the cross? and then call it entertainment. You know, non-believers, they can do whatever they want. I'm not going to hold someone who doesn't believe in Christianity to a Christian standard. That doesn't make any sense. But as a Christian amongst other Christians who call Jesus Lord and declare the authority of the Bible, that's a different story. And listen, like I said, I get that evil depictions and mature themes come with life, but content that has its main theme based upon stuff like this, come on, man we should know better. I'm not gonna be that guy that argues against Squid Game. I really don't care. You can do you, I'm gonna do me. There's plenty of shows and plenty of movies out there that we probably should avoid as followers of Christ. And it's not always just pertaining to violence. There's lots of other topics and genres out there. And over the past year with these thoughts going through my head, I've challenged quite a few friends' perspectives regarding where we should draw the line as Christians. And I'm gonna be honest, I was surprised most Christians watch a lot of mature content and they seem not to be phased by it all. So maybe the question isn't, should we watch this stuff? And maybe we should start asking, is it Christ-like to watch this stuff? Is it something that Christ would approve of? Am I pursuing righteousness by whatever I'm doing? But wait, Matt, where do we draw the line? What about Christian liberty? Stop being a legalistic Pharisee. You're right. I shouldn't jump the gun. Let's dig a little bit further. One of the biggest arguments that I've heard over the years is that we have Christian liberty to do what we want. This Christian liberty is cited from Romans 14, where Paul tells the believers to unite and stop arguing and causing weak Christians to stumble over the meat that is being sacrificed to idols. Some think it is wrong to eat and others think that it's okay to eat. And But meat is from the Lord, so it all comes down to the conscience of the person of what's the right thing to do. Christian liberty in a nutshell is that there are some issues of conscience or theology that Christians might legitimately hold differing views on and we should 
should have the liberty to do so. And I think it's a misuse of claiming Christian liberty to support watching sinful depictions just because we find it entertaining. Christian liberty isn't a license to indulge into questionable stuff, especially content that we deep down know doesn't glorify God. Like there's no question about it. It's not like we're talking about a piece of meat here or what day that we should take the Sabbath on. We are talking about entertainment that's centered around the themes of murder, extramarital sex, nudity, infidelity, hate, and gore. All these things are summed up to be depictions of sin that does not glorify God. And we're calling this entertainment. You see, this isn't a Christian liberty issue. I think it's a hard issue. But hold up, wait, wait, wait. The Bible's full of murder, extramarital sex, infidelity, hate, and mature content. You're right. It is. And those are historical accounts of normal life that happened in those times. You know, we can't escape reality. The safe bet would be just to avoid what you can. But sometimes we will watch shows that may exhibit scenes of maturity because not everything is meant for harm. And we can't expect secular media to cater to a Christian audience. That's not going to happen. But instead, we need to use our discernment and wisdom gained from the word of God to decide where to draw the line or when something is just not meant for us. But now getting back to the nitty gritty, there are a lot of shows that clearly have no benefit to our spirit in any way, shape or form. And funny enough, these are probably some of the best made shows or movies because let's be honest, Netflix really kills it when they make their originals. They are just made so well. And I think this is where we struggle because Christian movies are such low quality. I'll be the first one to say pure flicks sucks. But that's besides the point. We are called to be set apart. We are called to put off our old desires and take up the desires of Christ. We are called to pursue righteousness, to imitate Christ, to run the race with endurance and live in the fruits of the spirits. And with that known, I have a hard time accepting the idea that Christ would approve some of our entertainment choices. So let's stop misusing the idea of Christian liberty. And in conclusion, apart from navigating the waters of the sermon, most importantly, don't you want to glorify your Lord and Savior? He took our sin and he nailed it to the cross so that we would not bear the wages of our sin. We owe everything to him. I don't know why we would want to try to see how close to the line of sin that we can get. It truly amazes me how Christians will argue to justify potential areas of sin in their life rather than advocate for righteousness. You see, Christ is worth all our attention. He's worth all our effort and he's worth all our praise. Let's strive to live lives that glorify his holy name.